The Minnesota Wild season is finally here, and we break down every angle of what should be another successful season for the Minnesota Wild. We dive in to the 2022-2023 season preview today on Locked on Wild. You're locked on wild. Your daily podcast on the Minnesota Wild. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. That's right. It is time for yet another episode of Locked On Wild, your daily Minnesota Wild podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. It is available wherever you listen to your podcasts, absolutely free of charge. On today's episode, we preview the 2022-2023 season, giving you everything you need to know about the Minnesota Wild for the entire year. My name is Seth Topol, your daily Minnesota Wild insider, and I'm joined, as always, anytime there's anything big going on, in the state of hockey by Alex McLeddy and Zach Zeman. The triangle of authority is back. Gentlemen, the season is upon us. And to gear it up, I'm going to tee off with a question for you. What is your confidence level in the Minnesota Wild heading into this ski season on a scale of 1 to 10? Alex, where are you at? Yeah, I'm pretty high. I'm going to give it a 9. Uh, you know, exciting preseason. Uh you know, you know, looks like some chemistry is already going. Uh, so, I mean, I'm excited. It's uh, we get a full year of Mark Andre Fleury. Um, so, I think that's what people have to just realize. Um, you know, he's now he's comfortable. He's in. You know, he's with everybody. You know, coming in at, at, uh, at the trade deadline is tough. So he's yeah. got a he's got a full season now. So I'm excited to see how far uh, the flower takes us. Zach, what is your confidence level? I'm very high as well. I'd I'd say a nine or a ten or eleven. I think you know this team has what it takes. We saw, we saw a great preseason. I'm I'm super stoked to see you know Rossi Boldy both develop on their own. You know the whole the whole thing last year was Boldy and Fiala. Fiala is helping Boldy a lot, but now Boldy gets to finally make a name for himself and prove to everyone that he's the real deal, in which I think he is. I also think Rossi is finally here for a reason. Kalen Addison as well. I mean, we got a lot of young guys here ready to make the name for themselves, and I think this is going to be a very interesting year for the Wild. A lot of development, but also a very high finish, I'm expecting. Scale of 1 to 10, I'm at a 17.3. <laughs> and so um, you just you look at everything that happened in the preseason. Very, very business-like approach. No new injuries. We saw the things that we needed to see from all the different line combos. Marco Rossi looked great. Kalen Addison looked great. They both earned their spots. We've talked about that all preseason long. It just looks like a team that is poised to prove a lot of people wrong because, you know, we've we've seen kind of the clouds of doubt for this team all offseason with regression being a possibility for several key players on this offense. Regression on goaltending. Bad special teams. There were a lot of things that seemed to potentially lead up to a cloud factor over this team this season, and it seemed like all those questions were answered for the most part throughout uh, the preseason. So we're looking at an offense that should, you know, focus on Kirill Kaprizov and flow down from there. Let's start on offense, though, because there are plenty of candidates. Marco Rossi, Tyson Jost, you could throw Sam Steele in there. If you had to pick one player that you think will be the breakout candidate, will be the one that has the most surprising season on offense for the Wild this year, who are you going with, Alex? Yeah, I mean, it's got to be the kid, uh, Marco Rossi. Um, you know, this is his opportunity. Um, we're seeing it across the NHL. Uh, teams are struggling with the cap, and so they have to use a lot of entry-level contracts. And so... Um, you know, Marco Rossi is going to be given a lot of opportunities to um, to produce. Uh, he's going to be on the power play, um, and so yeah, that 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 leads to hopefully a lot of success. You know, when you're on the special teams unit, um, so yeah, I'm excited excited to see if he you know runs with the opportunity. 
Zach, who are you picking? I'm picking Matt Boldy. I've been high on this kid forever. I think, you know, the guy out of Boston College, he made a name for himself visiting Boston uh, last year in the wild for needing him the most. And I think this year when he's finally by himself, this kid is is what he has what it takes. I think this is a legit year where, you know, it, people expect him to do well, but I think he's going to, you know, exceed expectations here. Um, I've been high on this guy forever. He's – it's his time. It's his year. And, and you know, he's going to support the guys on his line. And I think he has what it takes. He's I mean, he was with the team last year, but he I mean, we, we all just expected, you know, a, a stellar like, you know, nice puzzle piece to, to work it out. But, you know, this year's his year. He's going to make a name for himself. I think he'll he'll definitely boom. I'm excited to watch him for sure. I'm going to Tyson Jost. I think there has been so much steam centered around him making the most of an opportunity to elevate beyond a fourth or a fourth line role for this team. He's going to start as the fill in for Jordan Greenway on the grief line, the tie reef line, I think is what I called it, which makes <laughs> absolutely no sense, but you know, we're going to try set something. Ball special. <laughs> yeah. We're going to try, something, try to find a fit. Let's so roll. he'll start, he'll start there, but I fully expect that he is going to, uh, to shine and to elevate into a spot. But, the beautiful thing about this for Dean Evason is there really is not going to be pressure on him to mix up the lines unless they prove to not work. We try, we saw a bunch of different things tried throughout the preseason, different line combos in the event that something doesn't work. They can plug and play with a couple of different potential players on each line, but it's best case. It's going to be that all four line combinations work and that's what we go with the whole season. It's probably not how it's going to go, but I fully expect that we're going to see a couple of these line combinations really work, really pop. And I, I, I don't know. I just, I think offensively, this team's got a good mix. I think it's going to be a team that is deep offensively. And I think it's going to lead to plenty of goals here this season, especially by the Capri's line but also by that uh, Dewar, Duhame, and Rossi line. I think that has potential to be a really good, compared to the competition they're going against, I think it has potential to be a really good fourth line to start the season. And again, fourth line in quotes, because they're <laughs> going to play. They're going to play plenty. Yeah, it's it's you know it's gonna be chaos. They they like they they like to forecheck. Uh, they like to hit, um, and so I'm sure we'll see a lot of fights out of some of them too. Um, so yeah, I'm I'm excited. The uh, the depth of this team is is huge. Uh, you know, it's gonna be spread around. I, you know, I I don't think you know it's not necessarily you're gonna rely on the Kaprizov line. You're gonna get scoring from all four lines. Uh, getting a guy like Sam Steele is huge. Uh, you know, he gets the opportunity to re redeem himself on a on a better team than where he was previously with, with Anaheim, and uh, you know, it, so I'm I'm excited to see how um, how he plays. Um, and Kalen Addison, we've been waiting for this kid. Um, you know, he was the crown jewel in the trade um, with uh, for Jason Zucker, and so uh, we'll see. Uh, you know, if it pays off, you know they they treated uh, they traded Kulikov. You know, allowing uh, you know. Kalen to finally get his chance and so he's gonna be on power play one so I mean that's a lot of op you know a lot, a lot of a lot of opportunities to get uh, assists you know passing it to to Boldy and Kaprizov and Zuccarello so yeah it's gonna be fun to watch his development for sure too yeah I'm, I'm excited to see I, I think the wild are one of those the teams in the NHL where their their lines are super fluid I think there's a lot of room for mobility within you know the bottom three lines and there's a lot of players who have the ability you know to move up if they need to be moved up and to move down and, and it's totally fine uh I think this year is a big year for Marc-Andre Fleury he finally gets a consistent starting role um you know that was kind of the story last year with him and Talbot constantly getting jumbled up and down and who's starting the playoffs and I I think I think Fleury is more at home in the net most of the time um so I think he'll settle in um, he'll be ready and he'll lead the team as well. I think it'll be interesting to see how he plays. Obviously, he's got that age factor, but he's also Mark Andre Fleury, Stanley Cup champion. So you know he's got what it takes. Um, you know, but there's also a great fluid line ahead of him. Great defensive core with Kalen S. And now it's gonna be awesome to watch him play this year. Uh, I think I think are are well deserved at this point. 
Yeah, I ultimately I think I think we're going to see something uh, exciting and special from this team once again here this year. Maybe it doesn't translate to franchise records, but it still is a team that has potential to be really, really good. And so we'll we'll look at some of the other factors, areas that this team is looking to improve in a major way. I've got some numbers that I've been trying to really hammer home because it looked daunting, I think after the season to look at like what it would take for the special teams units to be um, better, like top 10 better. Turns out it's not. So we're going to take a look at the special teams. We'll talk some goaltending. We'll talk some defense as we continue the 2022, 2023 season preview here on lockdown wild after this. Today's episode of lockdown wild is brought to you by BetOnline.net. BetOnline.net is your number one source for football betting info this season. You can find all the latest player developments, plus team matchups, news, podcasts, and in-depth articles and analysis on every game you can find. And as always, BetOnline.net remains your continued source for all of your sports wagering information with live betting and up-to-the-minute scores for every sport out there, including the NHL, during opening week. The fastest and easiest way to check in on all of your favorite games and events, including Major League Baseball, MMA, boxing, and golf. So head over to betonline.net or use your mobile device to learn more. You can find all of that, and that's just the tip of the iceberg, at betonline.net, where the game starts. Continuing today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. Listeners of Lockdown Wild and our other great Lockdown Sports Minnesota shows, you can find us now on Roku and Amazon Fire TV as part of Lockdown Sports Minnesota. More great local sports coverage 24 7 and absolutely free of charge. So make sure to download the Locked On Sports Minnesota app today on Roku and Amazon Fire TV. All right, let's talk special teams. Not great last year. That's not a surprise. It's not a hot take for me. Penalty kill was 25th in the league. Power play was 18th. Fellas, what if I told you in order to get into the top 10 in penalty kill, the Wild had to increase by 4%. They were at 76% last year. To get into the top 10, they'd have to get to 80. 4%, which the Wild last year had 264 penalty kills. That would mean that they would have to be, they would have to kill 11 more penalties over the course of a whole season. That's, that's not even like, it's like one a week. I, no, that math is terrible, but it's not that much. So what do you think are the odds? Uh, how good are the odds that we see a dramatically better penalty kill and power play considering what we saw in the preseason and the personnel that uh, that we'll see throughout the season? Uh, Alex, let's start with you. What do you think about the penalty kill and the power play heading into the season? Yeah, I'm excited for the changes to you know to see what uh, Dean and crew have uh, cooked up. Um, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna see some new guys on those units. Uh, um, like like I mentioned previously, we're gonna see Kalen Addison uh, quarterback that power play one. So I'm <laughs> looking forward to that. Uh, Matt Boldy, uh, you know, being on that top power play is gonna be a ton of fun too. Um, and yeah, we're gonna see uh, you know exciting. You know, penalty you know, uh, kill units too. Uh, um, I love uh, love seeing Connor Dewar. Um, I hope he gets a chance to, to be on the penalty kill and do aim, just you know, causing chaos out there. And uh, uh, yeah, it's 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 gonna be gonna be a ton of fun to to see. Um, you know, to for them to you know advance out of the first round. Uh, you know, both both units have to be a ton better. Um, that's the name of the game. Come playoff time, goaltending and special teams. So. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> Zach, PP and PK, your thoughts. Zach is muted. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because my there Wi-Fi is so bad. I'm muted because my <laughs> Wi-Fi is so bad. 
and I don't want to mess up the show. But I think I hope that can be edited. Yeah. What I was saying to myself in my own room, as quiet as I am, um, <laughs> was the the narrative this year is can the wild younger players jump into bigger boots and bigger roles, and and I think that's the whole story that this whole year um, is going to entail. And I think that you know, based off of last year's stats with the PK and PP, you can only go up from there. Um, I know I wouldn't, I really wouldn't be shocked if it struggles early on. You know, it's going to be tough for these guys to really get the, oh, crap, I'm in the NHL or, or you know, get the jitters out and really get, you know, sustained in this league for a while. And, you know, it's just it, – that's just the opening couple weeks. That's what they're all for. Um, there's obviously going to be some changes, but I think, you know, you can only go from what you did last year. Um, you know, and what Alex said, you got to have two consistent lines heading into the playoffs. You, you really got to figure that out by the end of the year. And thank goodness that's in April and not October. You know what I mean? Like with, there's, there's still a lot of, there's a lot of season, but you know, these opening couple weeks really do matter. Um, you know, you got to find what works really quick and what doesn't. I think that's what gets a good team going earlier in the year. And if you find those solutions and great, and if not, then you can improve throughout the year. Um, but I think this, it can definitely be better than it was last year. It was, it was tough to watch. So I I fully agree. Um, I think both units have a chance to be really good because we saw stylistically the changes that we were looking for from both units. The, the power play wasn't stagnant throughout the preseason. The penalty kill was clearing the puck, which it's just it's crazy to me that that became such a an issue for this team, um, especially down the stretch uh, of the season. But that's been better. Power play has been better. Penalty kill has been better. And so to kind of finish off this, like, where are we going to improve to get to where we want to go? We talk about the goaltending and a notion that I didn't really put a whole lot of time into during the offseason, but I think is going to be super important. You had two goalies this past season who were about as stylistically different as could be in Cam Talbot and Marc-Andre Fleury. Flurry more apt to play the puck to the corners, kick rebounds out to uh, to allow them to be covered by his team. And Talbot was not that not that guy. So not having to like differentiate between the two, I think is going to be huge for this team. And yes, Flurry's getting up there in age, but having the full off season, having the full preseason having everything to gear up and get ready for this this upcoming season. I thought Flurry looked good and that gives me confidence that he can uh he can be what the Wild need him to be uh for this season. Yeah, I mean, uh there's no awkwardness, which is which is great. Um and and Gustafson knows his role. Um and his role is to step in uh when when Flurry's tired or he needs a break. Um and, and hopefully the team can play the same way in front of both of them. And, uh, you know, Flurry's won cups before. Um, he knows what it takes to win. Uh, you know, he, he, he knows that uh, the team can, can climb on his back um, and he can take them far. So um, it's nice to have that veteran leadership in that, um, a guy that's calm, that's been there, that, you know, if things do start to struggle – he knows how to get out of it too. Uh, that that's a huge thing because um, this wild team's in transition. You know, we got there's um, there's some new faces, some young guys that you know have never played in the NHL or or, or um, don't have a ton of experience, and so um, there there could be some growing pains. Um, and so uh, to have a guy like Mark Andre Fleury back there, it's it's huge. It means everything. Absolutely, I'm unmuted this time. <laughs> but you know as this team you know i think it's actually you know seth you said how mark on was more like go get them like let me play this puck and, and that it got me thinking that you know when, when a team's rebuilding and when a team is like not like the wild aren't rebuilding but when they have younger guys who are like go-getters and want to make a name for themselves in this league i think flurry the legend that he is is a great goalie to have um in, as an insurance in, in front of your net and i think you know if, if flurry has the leadership you know that he's gotten throughout all these years um he can he can share it among the new guys who are trying to make a name for themselves i think that's a really cool dynamic within the locker room um you know gustafson he's still he's still fine i mean you know it's it's you know i was a big i was big on talbot last year and you know it's unfortunate how it went but it, you know it's business and so 
Um, and I think that once you get, uh, you know, now now Flurry gets a consistent role. Um, you know, he's just he's just a legend in the net. Um, and if he can shed that on the new guys, then I think it's going to be a really cool thing heading forward this year. It's going to be a really good story. Um, and, and if I was a new guy on defense, like like Kalen Addison, and I know that Mark Andre Fleury's in the net behind me, then I might feel more comfortable than you know feeling like I have to be the goalie on defense. You know, I've, I've never played hockey, but you know, just having a consistent <laughs> insurance behind you must feel good. So, oh yeah, I I think that's a great point in that you have. You have a veteran back there to where you know, and you have veteran teammates around you to where if you do something, if you make a mistake, that um, you've got teammates that have your back. And that's been a big thing with this team over the last few seasons as well, is the chemistry is second to none. And there are a lot of guys on this roster, everybody on this roster, who believes in what this team is doing and has their teammates' backs. That's not something that could be said going five years back for this, uh, this franchise. So I think that's a huge part of this in that there's not like pressure on any of these guys. If they make mistakes, everybody's human and they just move on to the next day. This team's not going to go 82 and oh, and so (laughs) there are going to be, there are going to be games that are lost. There are also going to be games that are won. And at the end of the day, you know, they, they win and lose as a team. So I, I think that's a huge point, a very good point to bring up. And uh, I think it'll definitely play into account here this season. Now, before we discuss the Central and the Western Conference at large, I do want to ask one thing just about the defense in general. You know, it was so tricky to discern down the stretch. Are these issues that we're seeing in the series against the Blues Is that the defense? Is that the goaltending? Do we have any concerns about the Wilds' decor heading into the season? Alex, yes or no? Uh, I don't think so. I mean, I think uh, they got rid of a weak link who had a really extremely tough uh, series against the Blues and Dmitry Kulikov. Um, so, uh, I'm glad, glad to see, you know, Dimitri, uh, you know, he played well in the regular season, just, you know, for whatever reason, you know, postseason, the bright lights, uh, it just didn't work out for the Russian. So <laughs> I'm excited to see Kale Madison get his chance. Uh, uh, when he played, uh, in that playoff series against, uh, Vegas, um, he looked great. Um, so I'm excited to see him be a full-time NHLer now. Um, he has a major opportunity in front of him. And so, um, you know, you got, he's, you got Jonas Verdeen, who continues to be one of the best shutdown defensemen in, in the league. Um, Jared Spurgeon, steady as ever. Uh, hopefully, a uh, hundred percent Matthew Dumba um, and uh, Alex Goligoski. You know what you're going to get from him. Um, and so, yeah, I don't. I think the strength of this team is obviously the decor. So, um, you know, they're going to ride them and uh, and hopefully shut down Mika Zibanejad tomorrow night. Zach, any uh, defense concerns? Yeah, I don't have any. I'm gonna piggyback off of Micheletti here. When you when you give Addison that chance, you know, to join that defensive core, it really says something about you know the willingness to adapt and and to move forward um, from the other guys. Um, I think I think that it, the Wild decor is, is fine. I think we'll get there when we get there, kind of thing. Um, you know, I think like I said earlier, this is the most one of the most fluid lines I see up in the NHL, and and you know, I think the decor really has what it takes right now. I think we'll be fine. Yeah, Mika Zibanej had that goal last night. Or as of, as of when we're recording this, that nasty backhander. Oh my goodness! Like you, you, you guys, I think Jonas Brodin. I mean, we can go back to that Edmonton game last season where yeah. he just shut down McDavid the entire game. You know, and we have what it takes. The Wild has what it takes, and and I think adding Kalen Addison to that and all the leadership, it's 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 gonna be it's gonna be really fun to watch for sure. Yeah, it's it's decor, especially with. Dean's willingness now to mix and match as needed, mm-hmm. depending on the opponent. So if you play a St. Louis or a Nashville or Dallas or Winnipeg or any of those other teams that are going to try to clomp it up, you can Middleton Dumba them to death <laughs> and they are going to like it and they're going to take that L. So I, I like that we're going to see some new things this year. You know, that's the other point before we transition is that the coaching staff has shown willingness to make changes this preseason, which I think is a huge part of 
what led to that loss against the Blues and a big part of them moving forward. So let's take a look at the, uh, the Central Division and the Pacific because it's going to be chaos. <laughs> so we'll finish by just taking a look at the Central and the Western Conference at large as we finish up today's episode of Lockdown Wilds after this. Final segment of today's episode of Lockdown Wild. Once again, thank you for making Lockdown Wild your first listen each and every day. And now that the season has officially started, make sure you check out everything we have for you at Lockdown Wild. We will have game previews. We will have postcasts. We will have other episodes throughout the week. We've got the Lockdown Lineup Challenge that is starting today. So keep an eye out for all of that as we get the season going for you okay central division first off colorado avalanche that's the proverbial mountain to climb again here in 2022 2023 yes or no do we see anything to suggest that colorado does not come out on top once again here in the uh the year 2022 2023 at least in the central we'll see i mean goaltending always seems to be a question mark for them but they they still somehow overcome it. Uh, so we'll see how uh, the Franco gorgiev pairing goes. Um, I think that could be their Achilles heel, their downfall. But they seem to overcome it by just uh, <laughs> you know, just outwilling, outscoring the, yeah. the their opponents and just demoralizing them. Uh, when you got a guy like Kale McCarr in, in the back end and uh, the Nate Dog, Nathan McKinnon, and Rantanen, and Landeskog, the, the names go on and on of just studs. Yeah, there, there's Absolutely. just a lot of talent. Yeah, Zach, that whole roster think? is just sad. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Sorry, it's... sorry to interrupt. Um, they, uh, you know, you almost don't need good goalies when you have those guys. I mean, Alex, <laughs> you said it. I mean, that, that team is exactly – like, I, there's – it's like – I don't even know how to say it. Like, they're, they're so good. Like, they're, they're obviously going to be back up there. And if they're not, it's going to be because of goaltending for sure, I think. You know, that's that's probably the biggest problem they have. But, you know, last year it worked out. So we'll see what happens again. Um, State of Hoppy, I had him on this week, too, and he said something that just was brilliant in and of its own right. He said that the wild of the teams in the Central may be one of the better bets to make the playoffs. Like that statement by itself, make the playoffs. If that ends up being a like number two in the division or number two wild card, that's where the change comes in. And you know, we go into this season with having to wait to see how all these things play out. Beyond that, though, everybody else is just a toss up. Like it feels like St. Louis, Nashville, Dallas, Winnipeg could all finish anywhere from second or third in the division to missing the playoffs entirely. Yeah, I mean, you got two two new coaches in, in Dallas and Winnipeg. So uh, we'll see uh, the Rick Bonus and uh, you know, Peter DeBoer eras uh, starting out. We'll see we'll see how that goes. That uh, very interesting moves uh, for both of those franchises. Um, and yeah, and you got you got a couple teams in Chicago and in Arizona who are in the Connor Bedard tank uh, sweeps uh, sweepstakes. Uh, so um, yeah, it's a really Really interesting division. Uh, you never know what you're going to get out of Nashville. They they could they could be a team that completely misses the playoffs or or challenges uh, Colorado for that one spot. So um, yeah, it's it's going to be a fun fun year in the Central for sure. And then Pacific, just you know, it's uh, a tornado. It's it's all over the place. I mean, I guess I'll address the elephant in the room for me. I mean, I live in Missouri, so St. Louis, <laughs> I'm surrounded by Blues fans and Blues everywhere, every single second day. So, you know, they, they lost two so, but they still have a ten, and I think it's going to be interesting for them. You know, you know, they had that great goalie tandem last year. Huso really worked out for them, and, and to see him go away is probably not the best thing for Blues fans. But I think that's the biggest narrative is Blues are wild, Blues are wild. You know, I guess people always have them flip-flopping as number two and three behind avalanche um and so i think i think the wild have what it takes if they can get it all figured out you know they could really get ahead of st louis again um but it's really going to be close i honestly i was going to say this before you said anything but 
I'm <laughs> scared of Nashville. I think they can really bump up and they can really say, like, here I am. I'm like, this is – I mean, I remember, you know, closing out the season last year, the Wild had to play Nashville in, in one of those tighter games, pushing for the playoffs, and that was one of the harder games. I think it was – Roman Yossi. We Nashville. got Roman Yossi. <laughs> Yeah, Rowan Yossi, like, like you, you can't, you can't forget that name. Like he, he's there, he's this absolute stud. Nashville still has those pieces. Um, you know, if they can make it work, they'll they'll be dangerous for sure in the Central. Beware. I feel like the thing with the Blues is that Bennington is going to be fine as long as he can keep himself above water. <laughs> if he gets, if he gets in his own head, if he tries to fight somebody on the other team <laughs> if he goes on a skid i don't know if he can get out of it and their backup in that situation is kevin no it's not kevin lankin and he went to nashville it's i don't thomas know thomas grice <sighs> yeah it's not good it's not good <sighs> yeah it's not that's, good. Um, that could be problematic <laughs> oh and their decor is just they're just losing people in that decor left and right yeah poor scott brunovich and marco scandela yeah it's it's uh it's a mess on their decor it's not good um pacific division i was ready to write the vegas golden knights off entirely and then they end up winning on opening night um you've got the calgary flames who are like hey, we lost a bunch of our best players, but we also got really good people ba back <laughs> in return. So we might be better than we were last year. Um, you've got Kevin Fiala and the Los Angeles Kings. You've got the Edmonton Oilers. I have no idea what to expect from this division. You've also got Bruce Boudreaux and the Vancouver Canucks. <laughs> so yeah. let's just go with this. Do we think it's going to be four teams from the Pacific making the playoffs? Or is the Central Division going to get a five-piece again? I think they're going to get a five piece again. Uh, yeah. I just, I, I just think the Pacific is still kind of weak. Um, we got a lot. There's a lot of teams that are kind of in the tank mode. Um, teams with really bad goaltending, um, and yeah. So I, I think, uh, I think you know the Central gets gets more for sure. I'm I'm pretty high on the Kings this year. I think it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, then like start from fresh and with Kevin Fiala in that lineup and Jonathan Quick, you know, is he's still there. So um, it's going to be interesting to see if they can make some noise. It was a tough loss last night to the Golden Knights, but you know that's what Mark Stone does. So um, I'm still I'm still against the Golden Knights here. I don't know if they'll make playoffs. I think that's that's a pretty big story in that division. Um, I I just honestly think it's going to be literally a coin flip, and I think Vegas might miss it. And I think the Central, like I said, the Predators earlier might might push them out. My new thing is going to be the, si the sly side smile, which is what I was giving <laughs> when we were talking about the Kings because of the fact that they lost to the Vegas Golden Knights. Well, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. I, know, I just got – I literally just said it's going to flip even if even they lost. So That was, <laughs> that was an awful game-winning goal to give up by the Kings too. Yeah, that was 24 oh, that seconds was left. Yeah, literally 24 oh, seconds left win for the previous like 30 seconds. They were just holding the puck behind the net. Yeah. Like just, <laughs> oh. if you're going to ice it, just, just ice. What a collapse. Just, yeah. Just, what a collapse. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I, I still think because when you put the two, when you put the two divisions head to head, the central division style seems like the one that wins out. And so I'm still going to take five from the central as for who that five is per se tune into the lockdown wild twitter account because tomorrow we will all release our official playoff picks for both divisions for the entire western conference <laughs> so make sure to stay tuned for that um as part of a new unveiling of a ton of social media content that we have for you all season long as well so we did in my first full season with this show we did a lot with this team so now Full year two, we're, we're breaking the doors down once again. So uh, Locked on Wild on Twitter. Make sure you follow along because we've got a lot of great fun things that will be happening all season long. Uh, gentlemen, before we wrap up, any final thoughts just on the Wild and the NHL season in general? Uh, Alex, any parting shots for the listeners? Yeah, well, like I, like I mentioned uh, earlier in the episode, uh, 
a lot of teams are going to be playing a lot of young guys. And so uh, that's one thing I'm really looking forward to seeing is some of these young, young guys uh, get an opportunity throughout the national league and uh, um, the wild. Um, well, it's a team in transition. Um, and uh, we have a couple of young guys in our own in uh, in Marco Rossi, Matt Boldy and some in Kalen Addison. So I'm excited to see their growth and uh, you know, see them get a chance to, you know, to be full-time managers and, and see how, how they do against the central division uh, because it's going to be back and forth all, all season. Um, and, you know, Colorado's the top dog, but every other spot's up for grabs. And so, um, yeah, it's going to be a heck of a journey for sure, guys. Zach, what are your final thoughts on the season in general? <laughs> Unmute. Unmute. Oh, I'm so <laughs> it's, it's me. It's literally Zach versus Wi-Fi. It, I muted because I knew my anyway. anyway, it's Colorado versus everyone in the West. And mm -hmm. and I think that if there's any team that has a shot of really proving themselves this year, it's the wild. And and if there's any podcasts I'm listening to throughout the year, it's locked on wild. So this is season two, episode one. I, the, the locked on wild to the moon. If you're not listening, um, you know, or subscribe, like, I don't know what you're doing. Like we'll, we'll be on here several times throughout the year. Um, it's really a blast always joining you too. It's, it's always a fun time. Yeah. Just, I mean, it's only the beginning of the year and, and we're off to a great start. So I can't thank you guys enough. It's, it's always a blast joining you. Too. So this is always a good time. I appreciate both of you hopping on here to preview the season. As always, we got a lot coming, as I mentioned, so make sure you don't miss out on a single thing that Lockdown Wild has to offer by subscribing wherever you listen to your favorite pods. And follow us on YouTube. Hit the notification bell. Get those notifications on. You won't miss an episode. We're going to have, like I said, postcasts, game previews, all of it in addition to our regular episodes throughout the week. So make sure you don't miss a single thing. We will keep you as up-to-date as we possibly can with new episodes every Monday through Friday as part of the Locked On Sports Podcast Network.